Hello and welcome to Med Tutorials. This is a channel that's dedicated to making simple and easy to follow tutorials in internal medicine. Today we're going to do a new series on ECG titled Decoding the ECG. This is going to be level one in the series. It's going to be a seven step, seven level series and we're going to start with the basics in level one and two and then we'll go on from there. If you find level one and two too basic for you, you could go over to the next level. In this tutorial, we're going to be defining and describing what an ECG is. We're going to understand some of the basic cardiac electrophysiology. Now, uh, without understanding electrophysiology, it's going to be difficult to progress in your understanding of ECG. So it's essential that you know at least a bit of uh, cardiac electrophysiology. And once we do that, we can identify the different components in an ECG and what they stand for. Uh, this is essential because uh, when we deal with abnormal ECGs, if you know what each component of the ECG stands for, it's going to be easy for you to figure out what's wrong with the ECG. So coming to the definition, what is an ECG or EKG as it is called in some countries? The electrocardiogram is simply a graph of the electrical activity of the heart. It shows changes in voltage over a defined period of time. So how do we get an electrocardiogram? It is a fairly simple procedure which can be carried out by a medical personnel with a bit of training. We have electrodes that are connected to the limbs and to the chest. These electrodes are connected to an electrocardiograph which records the electrical activity of the heart on a moving graph paper. The terms used here can be confusing. We call the ECG machine electrocardiograph and the reading produced on the graph paper as electrocardiogram. So just keep that in mind. Now in this section, we are going to address some basic concepts of cardiac electrophysiology. Once we understand how the conduction system of the heart functions and how the different components of an ECG are formed, we will be able to analyze the ECG in a systematic manner and make sense of what's going on. First, we are going to look at what happens at the cellular level. The normal myocardial resting cell is polarized. That is, it has a negative charge while the outside is positively charged. All it requires is an electrical stimulus for it to depolarize and cause a shift of charge. As we will see, this electrical stimulus is provided by the conduction system of the heart. The stimulus causes a wave of depolarization to go through the cell till the entire cell is depolarized. Depolarization of the cell results in contraction of the muscle cells. After the cells have depolarized, it returns back to its resting state. This phase is known as repolarization. During this phase, the contracted muscles relaxes. So just remember, the effect of depolarization is contraction. The effect of repolarization is relaxation. Each of the heart's four chambers function as pumps, with the left ventricle being the most powerful. We need to have the ventricles relaxed as the atria pump blood. It would be disastrous if the atria and the ventricles contract at the same time. This is why the conduction system of the heart is complex. We will see how the conduction system of the heart allows for a systematic contraction of atria followed by ventricles. We will now closely look at the conduction system and its different parts. The SA node is where it all starts. It is called the primary pacemaker of the heart. It is a small oval mass of specialized tissue that is capable of generating electrical stimulus. The stimulus then passes through the right and then the left atrium to reach the next group of specialized conduction tissue in the AV junction. The AV junction consists of the AV node and the bundle of his. 
the AV junction acts as a transit center for the stimulus to be carried into the ventricles. There is a small delay in conduction at the AV junction and this ensures that the ventricles are adequately filled before they start to contract. The bundle of his then branches out into the right and the left bundle branch which carries the electrical stimuli to the right and left ventricles. The stimulus is further carried by the Purkin J fibers. We're going to look at the stimulus passing through the conduction system again, but this time we're going to correlate it with the ECG components that are formed. Remember, as the stimulus is conducted down from the SA node, it causes a wave of depolarization, first in the atria and then in the ventricles, which is recorded as voltage changes in the ECG. Again, as the heart depolarizes, the changes are again recorded on the ECG. Remember that the depolarization corresponds to contraction, while repolarization corresponds to relaxation. The stimulus originates in the SA node. From there, the stimulus passes through the right and the left atria, triggering depolarization of both the atria. This atrial depolarization is recorded as the P wave. The effect of this atrial depolarization is atrial contraction. Hence, P wave represents atrial depolarization. There is a delay in transmitting the stimulus through the AV junction. And this is responsible for the PR segment. As I mentioned earlier, this ensures a gap between atrial and ventricular contraction so that the ventricles have sufficient time to fill up. Now, after this transit period, the stimulus passes through the right and left bundle branches and the Purkin J fibers, resulting in the depolarization of both the ventricles. This process of ventricular depolarization is recorded as the QRS complex in the ECG. The effect of depolarization of the ventricular cells is contraction of the ventricles. Once depolarization is complete, there is a small isoelectric phase represented by the ST segment in the ECG. This is followed by the phase of repolarization where the heart returns to its resting polarized state. Now on the ECG, the atrial repolarization is a low amplitude phenomenon which is masked by the higher amplitude ventricular repolarization. This ventricular repolarization is represented by the T wave. Now a U wave that is seen sometimes represents the last phase of this ventricular repolarization. During the phase of repolarization, the heart muscles relaxes. We will now summarize what we have learned in this table. We see the conduction, we see the wave that is formed, the electrical activity behind the wave and the effect. So conduction through the SA node and the atria causes atrial depolarization. The wave that we see is the P wave and the effect is atrial contraction. And as the conduction passes through the AV node and the bundle of His, we see it's a transit period which is responsible for the PR segment in the ECG. The effect, there is a delay in the ventricles contracting and this is the time where the ventricles can actually fill up before they contract. And then the conduction passes through the bundle branches and the Purkin J fibers and this is responsible for ventricular depolarization. The wave that is formed is the QRS complex and what is the effect? It's ventricular contraction. And then finally we have the phase of ventricular repolarization which is responsible for the T wave and the U wave formation. And during this phase we have relaxation of both the atria and ventricles but the atrial relaxation or atrial repolarization is not visible on the ECG because it's masked by the bigger event of ventricular repolarization. So looking at the ECG, we have the following components. Four waveforms, that is P wave, QRS, it's called as a complex, T wave and the U wave. We have three intervals, that is a PR interval, QT or we can also calculate the corrected QT interval and the RR interval. We have three segments that is PR segment, ST segment and the TP segment. Now I would like to talk briefly about the naming of the QRS complex. 
The waveform resulting from ventricular depolarization is called the QRS complex. It is generally called so even though many a times we may not see the Q or S component of the complex. A standard nomenclature for the QRS complex has been laid down so that a person over the phone would be able to picture the morphology of the QRS complex in a particular lead. If the complex has only one downward deflection, it is named as QS complex. If there is a downward deflection followed by an upward deflection, it is named as capital Q, capital R. Now, if the downward deflection is relatively small as compared to the upward deflection, it is labeled as small Q, capital R complex. If the initial downward deflection is relatively large and the upward deflection is small, it is named as capital Q and small r complex. If the initial deflection is just visible and is followed by a prominent R and S wave, it is named as small q, capital R, capital S complex. So it's not difficult on the whole to follow the nomenclature. However, if there is only one upward deflection, it is called simply as a R wave. Notice the difference with the complex one which was named capital Q, capital S. Upward deflection first followed by downward is labeled capital R, capital S complex. If in the above case, the initial positive deflection is small, it is labeled as small r, capital S. If there is a second positive deflection after the S wave, it is known as small r, capital S, capital R dash pattern. Now two positive deflections with a negative deflection in between, this is the classical M pattern, has been given the name capital R, capital S, capital R dash pattern. We normally call it RS, R dash pattern. So summarizing what we have learned, the ECG is a graphical representation of the electrical activity of the heart. The underlying electrical activity in the form of depolarization and repolarization is responsible for the characteristic pattern we see on the ECG. Depolarization corresponds to contraction and repolarization corresponds to relaxation. P wave, atrial depolarization originating in the SA node and it corresponds to atrial contraction. The PR segment, its transit of impulse in the AV junction, that is the AV node and the bundle of His. The QRS complex, this ventricular depolarization as the stimulus passes through the bundle of His and Purkinje fibers and it corresponds to ventricular contraction. The ST segment, it's an isoelectric phase of the heart muscle between depolarization and repolarization. The T wave and the U waves, which is sometimes seen, is ventricular repolarization where the ventricle begins to relax back to their resting state. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you like seeing more tutorials like this, please consider subscribing to this channel. So till the next time, bye-bye.